I like peanut butter. You're listening to Creep Geeks Podcast. I like peanut butter. I like peanut butter. Peanut peanut butter. I like peanut butter. So it begins again. Welcome back to the Creepiest Podcast. This is episode number one one three. Interview with Bobby from the Asheville Past Lives Project. Yes, very nice. So today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. So you get to get a free audiobook download and thirty day free trial at audibletrial dot com forward slash cheap geek. So what's this podcast all about? Uh, we're broadcasting paranormal news and fun stories from our Creep Geeks Bunker Studio in the mountains of Western North Carolina. Yes. We're an offbeat news podcast that takes a lighthearted approach to the strange, the stupid, paranormal, and tech topics circulating the web. It's almost like you were reading that. Maybe I was. Very nice. <laughs> so we're actually pretty lucky we have Bobby here from the Asheville Pass Lives Project. And if you ever wondered anything at all about what we're about to talk about, this episode will be good for you. <laughs> and let me explain why because a lot of times when you do or actually when you hear like interviews and things like that everything is sort of down to the minute and we were talking about this before the show where there's only so much time you can you know spend on each subject before you have to move on or you know you have certain questions and things like that that you can ask and that's it but we're lucky enough to where we can ask pretty much any question we want and spend as much time exploring those questions and answers as we need and Bobby can spend as much time as he wants exploring those answers as That's well. That's right. So. Because, see, it's really not on us. <laughs> it's on him. <laughs> Until the Runa and Jolt Cole are on There you go. Yeah. There you go. So that's why kind of, you know, kind of why we like doing this podcast, because we get to kind of do things in a different way. Because we were talking about that and how radio shows and things do things. And you know, it's kind of liberating to be able to sit down and go, hey, you know what? I'm going to talk about past lives for 40 minutes. Yeah, we're going to talk about whatever we want. Yeah. And the past so. lives guy wants to talk about aliens. Yes. That's even better. I was like, what? And it's like, okay, Bobby just went up five cool points right there. <coughs> Excuse me, because that's something we've noticed before is that it seems like there's a little bit of separation between people that like certain things and they think that they either can't express a like towards something else or, you know, everybody that likes this sort of thing, whether it's UFOs or past lives or, or what we call woo-woo stuff, right? or cryptids or any of that stuff, you know, for, if you're a fan, you get to like it all. But if you're more into it and you're more of a researcher, it's almost like it's frowned upon for you to have multiple interests, you know? Yeah. And we kind of think that's dumb. Like, how dare a Bigfoot expert also believe in UFOs? Yeah. You know? And it's it's almost like you're trying to muscle it on their turf. So when you're talking about, yeah, can we talk about UFOs and that sort of thing? And so I'm like, heck, heck yeah, absolutely, <laughs> why not? So... so it, it works out pretty good in our favor that we get to ask all these questions and find out all this stuff. It's almost like we don't know what we're doing with this. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you've been handed a gift. It's like, yeah, I'll come on and tell you all sorts of stuff. So I'm super excited to have you here, Bobby. Thanks, you guys. It's going to be good. Good, good, good. So, okay, so the Asheville Past Lives Project. This, from what I read, is something that you put in. Uh, into play in 2016. Yeah, I started up a, a meetup in 2016. Very nice. After after being here, I moved to Asheville in five years ago, and three years ago decided we totally we need to do this. We need to have a let's see if this if there's anyone else interested in this crazy topic that I spend all my time and energy <laughs> researching and practicing. So there you go. So you said crazy topic, right? Yes. What is the Asheville Past Lives Project. In other words, what makes it the Past Lives Project? Um, what I've been doing is uh, I am reviving a technique from the 1960s called the awareness techniques that unfortunately passed away when the founder died in 1981. Wow. And uh, I'd been doing it since the late 70s when I was introduced to it. Uh, but I thought uh, when I came, moved to Asheville, I started doing it again on my own. And uh, I thought, Let's see if this still works in 2016 at the time, you know, because it was it was almost 50 years after it was designed. Mm. It was uh, the a gentleman named uh, William Swigard and his wife Diane. They just put out a bunch of pamphlets back in 1968, wow. published in 1970. So we're talking 50 years ago. Yeah, you know? lots gone on since then. So I I've been doing it on and off, but I I hadn't really been doing it with other people. So I luckily meet up as a kind of a 
turnkey operation to get <laughs> yeah. connected to people. Yeah. And in Asheville, there's like three different meetups a night of various woo-woo topics. It's pretty <laughs> absolutely amazing. It's a, a friend of mine from from Portland looked it up. He says he couldn't believe how much you know. Portland's a much bigger city. Yeah. But Asheville has much more of this stuff going on. And you know, it seems like that's what we noticed too. Western North Carolina in general seems to be kind of like full of this stuff. Woo woo tastic. Hey, we, <laughs> hey, we are Sedona East. There it's you official. Go. It's official. And, you know, and you, I've heard it from somewhere. You're what? not the only person I've heard that from. Yeah. yeah. About being Sedona or like Sedona. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it was you. It was yeah, him. I think I was. Okay, it was him. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I'm but, promoting that. And I'm that's like, the funny thing because, like, you mentioned Meetup and. In the past, I've had to use Meetup to find certain types of groups of people. <coughs> and Asheville, like, my phone just freaked out, you know, yeah. just trying to pull up all the stuff for Asheville. Uh, Whereas when we lived in Albuquerque, and sometimes I'd have to look up Sedona, it's like, okay, there's a lot of stuff here, but not to the point of locking up my phone. <laughs> um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. So we, we kind of came out this way. And it wasn't like that because, you know, I'm, we're, we're from the East Coast, and it seemed like, you know, back then there was some of this stuff going on, but not not really in Western North Carolina. But I, I can see in the past 10, 15 years, there's just sort of like become the sort of mecca yeah. for a lot of this stuff. I mean, there's always a little bit going on, but not like now. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. W- what exactly is Asheville? Okay, so the Asheville Past Lives Project is a culmination of what you started doing basically, what, in the 80s? Uh, in late what, 70s, right? In the late 70s, yeah. into the yeah. 80s. Yeah. yeah. And so. If somebody was to say, "Hey, what is it that you do? Like, oh. what what is it? Like, what what is? What, what do you mean by past lives? Like, what is it that actually? What is it? Well, um, <laughs> basically, like, what is it? <laughs> what is it? What are you doing? <laughs> I ask myself that sometimes <laughs> at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you doing this? What is this? I know. I, I I really think it's it's a fascinating topic. I think it's really powerful. I think it's got consciousness expanding possibilities which is what i really want to explore with people a lot of people do it once and they think oh that's pretty cool but when you really dig in you can really find out a lot about yourself and what you're doing here and you know what what it all means oh very nice you wind up in you wind up in very interesting places when you open yourselves up to this uh, technique um and i can see that i can see that because you know all right, so like if you if you look at like where we came from, you know, doing the whole nine to five thing, and being sort of in that sort of corporate environment to where we are now in a short period of time, we've sort of became sort of wide open to a lot of different things. But we're allowed to be wide open, so now it's like okay, we can take the time and actually look at different things and research some things and get a different viewpoint. Because I think once you get locked into whatever you're into, that schedule, that routine, it sort of closes you off. So I can see where it might be interesting or, or appealing to somebody to, to sort of want more than that. So they say, hey, let's see what's going on. Like maybe your past life is definitely influencing this current life, right? Yeah. Or maybe you're just unaware of what's been going on in your past or if you have a past. And I, I can see where maybe you know, taking the time to actually go and maybe learn a little bit about this stuff can help sort of make you more rounded than what you currently are. Because I think a lot of people really get hung up in that rut where they think this is all there is. And wouldn't it be nice if there's a possibility of looking towards the past and seeing what you did in the past, your past lives, you know, makes it more than just this is all there is. It's like this is what it was. This influences what it is. And this is going to be what it is for the future. And you can use all that. I don't know. I think it's kind of neat. Yeah. Plus, the you know, the, the starting point is that we do not come here as a blank slate. Yeah. And that is, you know, it's the anti, I don't know, of – physical universe theory yeah. like you start out and you download everything from your parents and and then you for six years and then you become a your own person and I, that's just i don't see that There's i don't i don't see kids, that either no. too many kids with the you know those interesting abilities and too many people have uh both likes and dislike dis- dislikes phobias and talents yeah. you yeah. know it's all it, it's a it's a mishmash of the positive and negative that we come in here with and uh even to, to, you know, some people are just obsessed with movies of a certain genre, you know, Civil War movies or gladiator <laughs> yeah. movies yeah. Or, or art, you know, or, or, or drawn to places on the map that they always wanted to go to. I, I think these are all indications that something is, something in your consciousness is beckoning you to pay attention. Yeah. To that. That's all. 
And that's something that a long time ago, I don't know if they've changed the opinion on this. They, they used to say, like you were saying, that, you know, pretty much you're born a clean slate, blank. It mm-hmm. doesn't make any sense because if you look at animals in the animal kingdoms out there, all animals have some sort of information that's been passed along from their mothers and, yeah. you know. And so you know, they're born, they can walk, they, they automatically know to be afraid of certain things and all that. It's like, how, why would humans be different? If we have the most developed brain or one of the most developed, developed brains out there, why would we be born with, with no instinct, no past, no, no inkling of where we came from? Like collective it doesn't make sense. consciousness, understanding, or knowledge. Yeah, I mean, like, oh, babies don't know anything. Like the simple it's example like, would be any sense. Um, talking to my sister-in-law. And she was talking about how this one bear used to get fed at a cabin, like a rental cabin. And that bear passed on to its offspring and it their offspring. And now they go to that cabin. Yeah. But they also know to avoid the other cabin down the road because there's a dude there that, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> to have this whole idea. Humans that, be the same way. You know, you know? Oh, no, no, no. Everything is learned. I don't think so. You know. And there has been those instances like uh, one of the ones I heard. This was a while ago. Was this this kid, little 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 itty bitty kid, like eight years old? He knew that he was a fighter pilot in World War II, mm-hmm. and he knew where he got shot down, and he knew where his tombstone was because he actually got shot down in the cemetery that he wanted to be buried at. Oh gosh! Wow. <laughs> and he took his parents right to it because he was talking to his parents, and his parents were you know listening open. to him. Yeah, that's a cool thing. They well, were open, and they were open to him because he had details. Yeah, you know, like he could draw from memory the entire cockpit. You know, this kid, like six years old, can draw the cockpit with all the gauges and make the gauges correct. You know, I think I heard that on Mysterious Universe. Actually, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's really interesting about it is that it the information disappears when the around between six and eight years old. Yeah. When the when you consci- the idea is that uh, from the time we're born until we're around six or seven, we're literally the kids in theta. We're in a different state of consciousness and that when we get our quote adult brain or adolescent brain Mm -hmm. where we go back into beta which is what enables you to function in the world like you know you ever talk to a kid and it sounds like they just someone that's just smoked their first joint yeah they're just just all over them like like, what are you talking about they're in a different you know they're in a different state of consciousness but in order to function and and you know go in school and learn math and stuff like that you you break out of that back into the alpha state that we're in as an adult mm. but when they do that they lose all those all those past life memories so you literally have to record ah. them and capture them like by the time they're teenagers it's gone they don't have any recollection of that stuff but that also that's kind of crazy harkens yeah, to something else in another community the paranormal community the paranormal community kind of says the same thing uh once you start to hit that age eight and then towards the pre-adolescent and adolescent years your paranormal experiences greatly minimize. Oh, really? Yeah. I that. And it is partially the hormonal change plus your brain being mapped, to, like starting to map itself to be more like an adult. You start to tune out those paranormal and unexplained experiences. So that's really interesting. Right it kind of even goes back to like the imaginary childhood. I was going to say that. Or yeah. childhood imaginary friend. Friends. You know. Yeah. <coughs> you get so. so closed off to it. You know, a lot of us through outside you know, like your parents saying, you can you know, stop doing that. You're, you're being a little weirdo. Stop doing that in public, right? But, I mean, it makes sense. You get so closed off, and then eventually you wind up in that rut. And so wherever you are. You, you know, want to fit in. Yeah. Yeah. And then you just get sort of closed off to it. You know, and your outside life completely affects all that stuff, too. You know, if, you, if you've got that sort of stressful job or you're doing the 9 to 5, you get in your own little routine, you don't have time to be thinking about other stuff like that, except for, like, right before you go to sleep. Yeah. Maybe have some weird dreams, right? So... Being able to go and see you and listen to other people have these experiences, I think, is pretty eye-opening for some people. Or it could be. It should be. Mm-hmm. That's the yeah. idea. That's yeah. The, yeah. yeah. Kind of makes sense. And then uh, and then at a certain point, you grow up and you move to Asheville and you go, I want to do all this yeah. stuff every <laughs> yeah. night of the week. <laughs> and, what? And that kind of <laughs> goes into, like, one of the questions we had, which is, you know, with your early childhood and being open and understanding – um, you know, this is me in the universe, and I have this previous experience as a child. And then you end up growing up and getting into that daily grind and getting so whatever. Why is this important to you? Is this a the opportunity to open people back up into that state, or is there another <coughs> purpose or mission that you have with this? Well, I've always been, I've always kind of had a sideline of, of uh, uh, 
being interested in paranormal stuff. I, in fact, I was looking for the book. Uh, 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 someone re re referred to the idea of a everybody has a book encounter. Somebody has one book that kind of opens the door for them. Yeah. yeah. And for me, it was a book by a guy named Frank Edwards. And I remember that I, I was looking for it online. I couldn't find it. It was it was strange something in the in the uh, uh, title. And I remember it had a red cover. And it was just a compilation of all weird. Stranger than science. That might have been it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, I'm I'm not sure if that was the one. He's yeah. got a couple of them with strange in it. Um, he's got strange people. I think. Also, strangest of all strangest of all yeah. flying saucers serious business yeah which yeah. i actually remember that being on my parents shelf really <laughs> so, oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> interesting guy but yeah. but so i was probably like 10 years old reading this stuff but it was uh, so i as a 10 year old i knew about poltergeist i knew about i remember casper hauser this guy that walked out of the woods in the town and you know just came out of nowhere i knew about uh yeah. ghosts and all this yeah. weird I, it was just so there was something in me that was always interested in this and then later on i uh i avoided being a nine to fiver by being a musician my whole life oh. um so i was able to you know i had my work nights and i had my days free to to read about the jfk assassination which is my other <laughs> doorway into the rabbit hole uh -huh. and uh um and all this ghost and you know paranormal stuff and then when i when i uh started going down to texas in the late 70s i met some people that were like one degree away from uh william swigard was doing this work with the awareness techniques in florida and there was a guy that had gone to florida and met him and came back to dallas and was they would that he taught me to do it. And then for some reason, I, when we went back to New York, I was the guy that was going, here, let's try this. And he could call it running past lives, like he would run a film strip through. Uh, oh, cool. Oh, uh, yeah. So I would, I would be the one running other people. Uh, and I've just been doing that ever since and uh, until I started up the, the Past Lives Project in, here and back in Asheville. So um, it's always been a part of me. It's always been a parallel thing to, to my music work. Huh. And... Basically, that's the goal down here in Asheville is to run people and get them through those past life experiences. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've done about um, about 175 sessions with people since I started. Just with since I started uh, this. Wow. Well, I, I discovered yeah. uh, very early on in the process, um, I was uh, getting a massage from a woman, and the woman said, "You know." My neck hurts. I think I was strangled in a past life. And I literally went, you know, I got this thing. <laughs> wow. And I and I did a session with her. And yeah. then she was doing a massage on someone. And Was a she strangled? Uh, well, uh, no, we didn't get to it. Oh. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was like my it? first one. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't very goal and results oriented <laughs> yeah. in, in the very beginning. But uh, she did a, a session with someone, uh, a massage on someone, and she mentioned it. So I wound up doing a session with her, and she, and this woman said, "Oh, my mother would would love this, but she lives in Denver." So I went, "Well, let's try." So I figured out that we could do this online with like Google Hangouts or FaceTime. Oh, that's so cool. then the world up like I can work with yeah. anyone in the world. Like again, William Schweiger had never thought about working remotely yeah. when he yeah. was doing this work, and he was also didn't think about doing it in a group, which I've also been able to do. So huh. things are different now in a, in a very interesting way so it's good that you yeah. bring it up because i think if when people start thinking about past lives and past lives regression they automatically assume hi hypnotic yes. regression yes. Yeah. yeah yeah and so swigard's method is different than hypnotic because it's what is it what's the difference I, I, between I call it's just a guided meditation to get okay. you to expand outside your physical body uh and then move into a place where you can ideally see through the eyes and hear through the ears in a past life uh see body. I think that's probably more appealing for me personally, like the whole idea of going in and, okay, let me go see this stranger and get hypnotized. You know what I mean? I yeah. mean, everybody, it's like, like, like we were saying before, it's like, I wouldn't want to come out of there and, and because you don't know. So the trust is probably not there right away. I mean, what's to say you're not going to walk around clucking like a chicken, right? Or yeah. worse, you see that, you, candidate yeah, or something. It's like, so, <laughs> you see that sort of weird thing. I think a lot of people look at the whole hypnotic thing. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not really that open to it. It's not, it's not for me. It's not necessarily a control thing, but. Oh, um, it is for me. So Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, it would make <laughs> yeah. sense that for, you know, for a lot of people, it would probably be a control thing. So the fact that you don't have to get hypnotized, and this is more of a guided meditation, I think is, is and it's should a make it more appealing. Yeah, and there are, there yeah. are definitely people that come to me that, aren't interested in being hypnotized and, yeah. and but on the other hand i have friends who are hypnotists and hypnotherapists and i i respect what they do and and 
I, you know, I appreciate what they do. I just don't think you have to do that anymore. You don't have to do a 20 minute induction to get into a state to access this material. I yeah. discovered about a year and change ago that you can do it with a group of people. I've done it in the meetups, you know, take eight to 12 people and in 10 minutes get them in and out of a past life, accessing the idea that uh, you can experience, uh, you can get a glimpse of your, the happiest you were in a past life and bring that back. You know, again, I don't want to take a bunch of people, let's see what the worst trauma you experience oh, God, go. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, we go, we go for the, we, so the people bring back a yeah. positive experience. I can see that. Yeah. That was your experience. It was the most terrible thing I've ever been through. <laughs> Do you want to share? Yeah. One yeah. Yelp star. Like, no, I don't want to talk about it. It's like, it. here you go, take this survey when you get done, right? Yeah. yeah. Why yeah. am I doing yeah. so bad yeah. on my survey, right? Yeah. 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 Worst experience ever. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally traumatized. Yeah. I mean, it, the interesting thing is what you want to do is a lot of times the, the dark stuff, the traumatic stuff is what comes up to the surface. But you don't want to trauma, re-traumatize people by being yeah. exposed to even, you know, whether, you know, like I said, the, the uh, uh, spoiler alert, if you had even one previous life, that life came to an end and you died. <laughs> and, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. and, but but the interesting yeah. thing, then yeah. there was, then there was a, <laughs> I can see people not thinking that way. Yeah, yeah. You, like, what? you died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you die, bro? Yeah, and and you know it, we could have you know dozens, hundreds, or thousands of past lives. So that means you've got dozens, hundreds, or thousands of deaths. Like I said, like Wiley Coyote's got nothing on me. I've found all these amazing ways I've yeah. been killed and died and, and, and you know, dropped what's that body. In a, what's your favorite? Oh, getting my head chopped off. Wow. Yeah, that was pretty... Uh, the middle See, ages were tough, bro. I was going to make a little bit of a joke there. <laughs> <but> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I'm going to go down that road anymore. Okay. <laughs> but... I mean, it makes sense, you know, if you look at it as, as past lives as being a thing and it sort of builds on everything that you are and all that stuff, because, I mean, even if you look at, like, the whole Hindi side of things and reincarnation and all that sort of, all the sort of ties in together. And I forgot where I was going to go with this. Well, my, my I was going to loop it into the old soul expression. Well, that and no matter what, the old soul, you may carry on a little bit more consciousness or a little bit more from the previous life. The point is... Like he just said, because it just hit me now, like, oh, yeah, that life ends. Yeah. yeah. And whether it's nice in the comfort of their own home, like dying in a bed or something, or getting your head chopped off or getting eaten by a li lion or something, it's a traumatic experience. Yeah. So I, I'd understand trying to take people to the more, the more happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I just do that yeah. in a group so we can they have something to share and they have an, a, an awareness that it's not all trauma. Yeah. 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 I mean, <laughs> yeah. Do you ever have people yeah. like... Yeah, otherwise it's like, yeah. gee, wh why would I go to do this? If yeah. I'm just yeah. be it's like, I don't think I'm going to do that I mean, Do you ever yeah, have somebody do say something yeah. like something mundane? Like s you're in a group and it's like, oh, I was filing papers and that was yeah. the happiest yeah. I ever <laughs> was. Oh, you know, it's sad. funny, no matter what it is, yeah. um, I've been doing it for about a year now and no... and no one has ever mentioned money or power as a as an experience of their happiest life. That's it's, it's no no one's ever been Scrooge McDuck going. I have so much money. This is I'm so happy. It's That's actually pretty off, awesome, really. Yeah. yeah, it really was. It's because, really because you know, that, that tells me that since I have no money or power, <laughs> this could then be, I will appreciate this, something other than the, the money. In or the power. future, you'll go back and go. This is as good as it it's got. Like, you know, I had a fantastic <laughs> dinner before I kicked off. And I was the happiest I've ever been. That brownie Sunday was. Perfect. Mm. Back in yeah. 2018, <laughs> had a delicious cupcake. The, the oh, lava God. molten chocolate cake was. Good. Those are pretty tasty. Oh, yeah, man. Those are pretty good. yeah. I like it when Domino's accidentally drops a box a couple of times because then they're already like already messed up. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right, so I think at this point we're going to take a quick second and we're going to take a little break and we'll be right back. And you're listening to the Creep Geeks podcast. Okay. The goal of MND Paranormal is to compassionately, knowledgeably, and professionally support and offer paranormal services to those who have been affected by a paranormal experience, including those who have been indirectly affected. Services provided include paranormal investigation, property research, and evidence review of residential, business, and private property locations. Cleansing of these properties are available upon request. No matter the circumstances of the paranormal experience, MD Paranormal Strive 
to offer a non-judgmental environment to promote education, open communication, and empathy to each individual that chooses to share their experience or come into our service. In achieving this goal, MD Paranormal is building and bringing together a community of open and like minded individuals by offering free monthly gatherings and events at the Shop Eclectic, 49 State Street, Marion, North Carolina. Call us anytime at 828 484 1637 or 828 559 2818 or email us at mndparanormal at gmail.com. So we have an event coming up. So we have a little bit of an announcement. And it, it, the good thing is, is that I was uh, trying to do a drum roll. Sorry. Bobby is here. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby's trying to destroy all the audio by beating all. <laughs> How did that drum roll sound? That sounded great. Like, you ready? Sure. Okay. The first ever Paranormal Roundtable. It's going to be held February 24th, 2 to 4 p.m. at the Shop Eclectic in Marion, North Carolina. And it's going to be a live event. You can come to the Shop Eclectic and be a part of the live audience, but you can also stream it live on YouTube. So this event, it's going to be hosted by Creep Geeks and MND Paranormal Encrypted Research. Now it is sponsored by the Shop Eclectic. We're going to have two raffles, prize swag, snacks, emphasis on the snacks. I like <laughs> snacks. <laughs> snacks are good. And uh, the Shop Eclectic, they will be providing a special discount for those in attendance. Now the round table will have uh, panel speakers ready to cover topics like ghost investigations, past lives and reincarnation, cryptids, cryptid research, and general Fortean topics, including Bobby here. He'll be speaking on behalf of past lives, reincarnation, and anything he wants. Yes. Because it's an open, judgment-free discussion with everyone. Very so, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad to get to hang out and talk to people about this stuff. Yeah, isn't it fun? Yeah. Thank you for including the past lives guy. Well, Heck yeah. it's an important part. I mean, I grew up with, you know, a little bit of woo-woo, and that was one of the top subjects. It really? was aliens, alternative theories on evolution, and past lives. And that was what I grew up with. So, Well, my idea is that what we what we would love to have is the grand unified theory of woo-woo. You know, the unified <laughs> field theory of, because all these things are just, Right next to each other, you know. Yeah. Past ghosts are right next to, you know, if you do Venn diagrams, yeah. ghosts yeah. are just next to, to uh, uh, past lives, and then ghosts are on the other side. It's ghosts next to cryptids, and cryptids are next to UFOs, and UFOs, and aliens, and then aliens, and it's just so it's just this giant 3D Venn diagram that we're all sort of connected. Yeah. But we don't really get to talk to each other because, no. you know, the past lives people would never talk to the cryptid people yeah. in under normal circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are like the UN of woo-woo here. This Heck is yeah. awesome. <laughs> you know, it's, because it's funny because we've actually, we've, we've actually talked to, you know, certain people about one subject or another that they're interested in. And then somebody would actually walk up and bring up another subject and that person we were just talking to, who is as crazy as the day is long with all of this stuff, <laughs> looks at that other person like they're crazy and just yeah. walks away. <laughs> and it's like, well, hold on, where are you going? You know, and they're like, oh no, no, no. And, and see, and that's the thing that you know we, we noticed. It's like, well, why is it like that? I mean, technically, if you're looking at like somebody has a, a crazy idea, it's way out there, you know. Oh. And you can entertain that idea. And then you look at somebody else who comes over, and they have a, a, a different idea that's also way out there. You think that the person that's crazy and the other person that's crazy, and I don't mean like for real crazy, but just kind of like out there, would like love each other. I'd be, yes. Like a kindred yeah. soul, you know? Like, yeah. Like, dude, you are just as crazy as I am. This is going to be great. But they don't. They seem to like they repel each other. And you I know? hate using the word crazy because. Well, I know. Yeah. I, I don't Eventually know. Eventually. I can't use like yeah. wacky or weird. because yeah, Alternative all theories. That's just too PC. Oh, I don't have time <laughs> to worry about all that stuff. But yeah, it's true though. I mean, I, so I mean, it, it's more accepted these days to believe in all of this stuff than it was like even in the seventies. Yeah. You know, because your parents would be like, "What are you doing?" And you're like, "Well, you know, I'm going to look at, I'm going to use these crystals, <laughs> you know, to heal myself." And they'd be like, "You know, what, what are you what are you smoking? What are you doing?" Well, you're just, like my mom even segregated it like. The bookshelf up high would have L. Ron Hubbard and L Whitley Stryber right here, but then Scott Cunningham and Ray Buckland were way over here. So it was like 
the pagan stuff was not allowed to mix in with the, uh, <laughs> the alien stuff, yeah. you know? <laughs> Let's not get these, uh, these uh, alternative <laughs> ideas mixed together because who knows what's that going to create, right? So, but it's like I, an alternative melting pot with all of this stuff. That's why I like the term woo-woo. It's, it's all you know, sort of the whole metaphysical, spiritual side of things. You can use that term woo-woo, right? Yes. And then you can turn around and use you know, cryptid for the cryptid stuff. And then you can use the UFO for the UFO stuff. UFO then you got conspiracy theory stuff. Which well, is get your band. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I, I don't know. I, I think that to be able to sort of, that, that's, that's one of the things, that's one of our goals is to go through and talk to people and see if we can get people to that we talk to to actually talk to other people or at least to find like-minded people who are open to, you know, hey, let me tell you about past lives, but did you see that UFO thing? You know, yeah. that, that's, that's kind of what it is for us. It's like, yeah. You know, we're not sitting here just like really wanting to. Like, what if somebody's past life was subject. a Bigfoot? Mind blown. I right have now. not had that come up. Um, I don't. <laughs> you're probably not going to run into that because if you look at like your brain versus animal brain, I, I don't think that's how that works. Because really, yeah, because I, I don't have know. You it ever has had to be a somebody? special circumstance, right? Not Bigfoot. <laughs> not a Bigfoot. If you look at the Hindis, right? They say, okay, you got reincarnated as a dog because you didn't learn your lesson or whatever, maybe you mistreated a dog Mm -hmm. in your past life, right? But I don't think it, I don't think it necessarily works that way. Like, what would you have to do to be reincarnated as a Bigfoot? Well, well, that's assuming that they're lesser creatures. That could be. Yeah. Well, I think, (laughs) I'm going to say that they probably are. (laughs) Because we have to make the assumption that we are the higher brained creature. So with like a lot of the Hindi. Because let me tell you why. What? A Bigfoot lives in the woods and does his own thing, mm-hmm. right? When wherever he has to go, he has to walk. Okay. Right. I can drive a car. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I can go all over the world. That's that's your standard for that's it. evolution. <laughs> when <laughs> higher consciousness yes. is the ability I, to start a car. I'm a full grown <laughs> man. <laughs> when I turned 16 and got a car, that's when the world began for me. <laughs> So you're saying Bigfoot can't drive to Waffle House, therefore... <laughs> then he is a lesser-brained <laughs> creature. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's, that's out there. Okay. But I am curious about that, though. Like, ha- And if he was a Waffle House, what would he order? Like, with Hindu beliefs, I understand it's kind of like a karma or dogmatic thing where if your life wasn't lived the best, you may get reincarnated into something lower. Um, is it commonplace for either, like, to be reincarnated into a dog or... I have not had anyone that I've done a session with that came up as an animal. An animal. Okay. What about an alien? Um, <laughs> well, here's the thing. Oh, we have music on. Oh, <laughs> that's just a little ambiance. Okay. That's my radio voice. All right. um, what's interesting is that when we're looking at past lives, we're looking at past lives on this planet. Basically. Okay. So, how long has life been around on this planet? Um, that's, you know, you know, yeah. just theoretically yeah. compared to the, the. She was legitimately trying to figure it yeah, out. Yeah, no, she was going to answer that. that. No, is actually, it was like one point because there's conspiracy years. theories about how long life has existed here. Yeah, but, so but yeah. chances are it's still not as long as the universe the, itself. Yeah, and so the idea is that you know. We've been, we've we've had past lives on other planets at some point. Just looking at the timeline mm-hmm. of of you know being hundreds of millions of years as opposed to a couple million or however many years here. Yeah. So so it's very easy for you to go to. Uh, uh, it would be easy to go to another planet or co- dimension universe or whatever. Or, yeah, yeah, different yeah. universe. Yeah. Yes. The, the only trouble is is that you have to learn how to navigate in that body you know we're so used to these you know two legs two arms two eyes and all that stuff like that yeah. you don't have any experience of, of being a cephalopod or yeah. a, you know we don't know what their perception it would be too hard to guide somebody well, into well, that, it, it's that just, manifestation it's just you would have something. to be pretty yeah. experienced at it to be able to handle okay. that experience um, and it would be just as traumatic possibly like um, we were talking earlier <laughs> The f- I've, I've had people in the groups uh, that have done it multiple times go and they find it very happy experience. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Being in a different type of body in a different environment. Well, think about it like this. Imagine 
if one of your past lives or incarnations was that of a hamster. Oh, gosh. A nice, you know, cage you're living in. You got the cedar shavings. It's <laughs> nice and warm. You got the little, you know, bed of cedar to sleep in all day long. You get fed. You get water. Your existence, basically, is one of comfort okay. and happiness. And they probably don't think about a whole lot of stuff because they get up on their own that wheel like they're going somewhere. They, <laughs> they, they never really make it anywhere. I mean, I could, I could kind of see that. Where in that hamster's mind, he's got it made, man. And he that's his entire universe. That's it. That's his whole thing. So yeah. if, if your whole thing is to be comfortable and well-fed and just kind of like sleeping all the time, that would be a, a wonder because he probably feels content. Because I would think that if you're trying to be looking at how a hamster thinks about things, it probably wouldn't translate necessarily to human, know, to, to human yeah. but maybe the feeling would, the feeling of content, okay. you know, the feeling of warmth and security, that kind of thing. Because if I was going to be short-lived, reincarnated into something, it would probably be something like a hamster. <laughs> <laughs> so no, we, we've gone from Bigfoot to hamster now. Well, right? hamster's <laughs> got it made. You know, but it, there is maybe the risk, Bigfoot's though. Bigfoot's got it made uh, from he, his perspective. He can't drive. <laughs> Can't go to Waffle House. Can't go to Waffle House. He can't. I mean, what's he doing? He's out there. He's getting wet, probably in the rain. He also doesn't have a water bill, so. (laughs) Yeah, but he also needs to take a bath because every time you ever hear about Bigfoot, you smell the smell. Yeah. And they evidently smell different than bear. And you you can smell a stinking bear. It's like the worst stinking dog ever, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Just go around the whole time stinking. But if you can't smell it. If you're used to it, yeah. yeah what's up? It's real great. <laughs> if you grew up stinking, you don't yeah. really notice the smell. Yeah. Anymore. It's like I stink, you stink, we all stink. It's what we do here. So, <laughs> so how'd we get here? I have no idea because I'm trying to look at our interview questions Bigfoot. and I'm like, what? <laughs> Where did we go from here? <laughs> it all goes back to Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. It all goes back to Bigfoot. Okay. It all goes because if you really look at it, right? I mean, Bigfoot is still, with all the sightings that happen and, and evidence, you know, quotes in the air, evidence people have, it's too wide-reaching. Um, and there's too many examples of it for, I think, for it to not be real. And the same could be said for past lives. Exactly. Because there's way too much evidence out there. I mean, so to say that one's more real than the other, I don't think that really applies, really. Okay. It's just, you know, your impression of the whole thing. Okay. So, but it all goes back to Bigfoot. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Which, who doesn't go back to the Waffle House. Apparently. That's right, because he can't drive, because <laughs> we drive. are the higher-brained animal. You know, kind of makes you wonder, did we miss something along the way, right? To, on the path of enlightenment, because we're supposed to be, you know, according to some views, incarnated to the point where we achieve enlightenment. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of noble, right? You're like, okay, just keep redoing it until you get it right. But... If you turn nine or ten and all that gets wiped out, it's kind of like okay, you, you get. We're going to give you a couple little hints, and then you're on your own. And you're on your own, yeah. And literally. that's why you keep resetting, like in the Matrix. Let me keep coming back, or the Groundhog Day, really, of, of all your lives to try to figure out. Because what happens if you get it right? So, is there a limit to past lives? Do you think? A, a limit in terms of coming, have, not having to come back. Like, or? like you get to take the pilot's exam three times. Otherwise, oh, uh, you know, <laughs> and, then, and then you're out. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, yeah, like trying to get on the bar. Yeah, legally, yeah. Well, I mean, like, like, okay, let's let's do it like this. What would be an average you think that people would have that you've just seen just from your experience in terms of how many lives? Yeah, it, there's, it's so totally unique. It's so you so might find somebody just has just the one, and well, you have somebody that's going to have like five. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, the, the woman uh, I got connected to, Diane Swigart, who is the uh, wife and co author of the, a lot of the work, the techniques. Right. And I got to talk to her. She's living in Florida. And um, she said that she's only had five lives, five huh. past lives. So that when she started doing this work, I mean, you, she you ran through her, her lives, in, and she was done. Yeah. yeah, in a very short period. So they moved on to the more advanced huh. aspects of this work. Like, w- what's interesting about the Swigards is that it was called the Awareness Techniques Plural. And for them, um, the past life stuff was only book one. That was just a starting point for a series of exercises into consciousness expansion. So, oh, okay. uh, well, you know, a lot of wow. people have spent their entire lives with doing past lives. But for them, it was like, this is just our way into... To, the idea that we have all this unfinished business that we're going to learn about and release. Mm-hmm. And then we bring that energy back into our consciousness and then we apply it in different ways. So it's, it's not the end point. It's just the starting point. 
Wow. Yeah, very interesting way. Because then you go from the, the past lives, and then, like I said, if you've if you've had even one past life and you died, there was a gap where your conscious your you had no physical existence, but your existence continued. Your consciousness ex continued. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The non physical aspect of it, and that's probably where we spent more time <laughs> than in the body. Ah. Uh, and that's and that's the life between lives that uh, Michael Newton explored a lot. Um, but that's that's a that's a whole other area of exploration. So that's the existence before existence. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Huh. See, uh, and that, that kind of makes me wonder. Is like, okay, so is that existence before existence as we know it? You know, is that limbo? Is that heaven? You know, what is that? Purgatory. I, the, I, I guess, and see, that's yeah. the thing though, because if you look at it, it seems like in most of these, in most religions out there there is a sort of a holding area and then you have the final enlightenment right or or heaven your yeah. your so you know what is it you know what i mean um it, it, well well here's the weird thing first of all a it's non-physical and b it's outside of time yeah so it's a so it's we can't even from coming from a physical time structured environment it's hard to even grasp get yeah. a handle on which is why it's so experiential when you get out there every all of the reports i've had from all the people i work with have all been uniformly positive absolutely just wonderful connection feeling connected to the all not being separated in that certain way right uh, and you know our these bodies are wonderful but they're also containers yeah. you know i mean we're we're separate entities and when you're not in a body you're not separate in that sense yeah. so people yeah. have, that's the positive that's the the sense of, of being connected to you know being a part of the light instead of one little orb in it or something hmm. that's crazy yeah it's very great yeah it's very but again it, but and the time thing is just a whole nother rabbit hole <laughs> because the idea that you're not you're outside of time and then when you come into a body you're in time and then you go back outside of time when you're in it is very challenging it's you know it's very science fiction concepts. Yeah. But you get to but with this work you get to experience it. So huh. it's like it's like here what's and 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 it's all completely unique to every single person. Everybody ah, okay. has their own. So it's like I don't I don't like the format of uh, some people that have said that okay when you die you go through this 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 and this you know the checklist. Yeah. I, everybody's experience is different. Be depending on where you're coming from and where you're going, where your level of awareness is, your experience, it all see that that's kind of troubling because if everybody's experience is different, then how do you know what you're supposed to do? Everybody says go to the light, <laughs> but what if for you, the it's light the dark. is the is is not what you're supposed to do? Like, how do you know <laughs> what you're supposed to do? Like, what if the light is a trap? <laughs> the light's right? a trap. Yeah, it, you know, the light's a lie. Don't go to the light. You know, because what? Because I've heard that too, where people have ex like near death experiences, right? Or uh, and where is it in their experience they were traveling towards the light, but somebody stepped in and said, "Don't go to the light, go back, don't go to the light, or yeah. go go here," and they did, and then and now they're back. Yeah, yeah. You know, or the light's a bad thing. You don't want to do that. Well, so, I, I, I think you know, it's, what do you do? I don't you know? think it's in terms of it's bad. It's just that they're <laughs> telling them to go back into the body. Well, one of the things I remember, and this was, is this was an episode of a podcast that really freaked me out. Um, they said that, and that, and it was based off a, a series of books that this person had written. And I, I don't really have much more detail on that because I was actually driving when I was listening to this, going, "This is freaky." Okay, so you die, you're heading towards the light, and before you get to the light, there's someone who will step in and give you a choice. I mean, the choice is you can go to the light or you can basically choose door number two where you may or may not be promised all these wonderful things, you know, <laughs> another chance, and they leave it at that. And when you go through door number two because you don't want to go to the light because you're offered this po the possibility of these other choices, then boom, now the, the demons own you, basically. <laughs> and you, you're basically, you've, you've, you've signed your way into purgatory or, or, or hell or negative existence. I, let's, I can, all I can say is I haven't had that experience <laughs> with mine. So, and, and, and it's interesting because I, I always thought that the NDE people and the past lives people should be doing what we're doing. Yeah. Which is, and they don't. It's, that, they, yeah. They, that, because it's, it's so funny that the NDE people look at past life research as woo-woo, which is like, no. 
<laughs> that doesn't make any sense. It's like sense. you were right there, man. I know. What better yeah. person to talk to than yeah. somebody who was yeah. right, right there? Right there, the NDE and then the past live. And then some of the things you were both saying <coughs> kind of reminded Excuse me. me. Wait, NDE, past lives, and then what about the whole paranormal community? Exactly, because exactly. if our souls are resting in like an Amazon warehouse and then it dips back into time where we have these physical forms and then... Once we pass on, does it go back to Amazon Warehouse or does it go to the next stage of enlightenment? What about ghosts? What yeah, about those uh, things that are witnessed during NDEs? Yeah, did they choose poorly? Uh, yeah. Did, they, um, did they not make a choice? Did they just walk off completely <laughs> and now they're stuck? <laughs> oh, well, it's, what's funny is that um, – well, not funny. What's interesting is that um, so much of ghost phenomena is based around – traumatic events happening mm-hmm. right like tragic deaths absolutely or, or, or murders or stuff like that yeah. so that so you can see where a trauma can can box you in and hold you to location where right you're afraid to go you, you're just you're still trapped connected to that body and the trauma that it experienced and you're not moving up and going yeah. toward the light or toward you know your your soul group or whatever you know whatever form you see in the non-physical. See, and that's something that I've wondered. Okay, so if you're if you're anchored because of this traumatic event, because you didn't make a choice, because it was so just traumatic or, you know, it was so, you know, bad, <laughs> and you're the ghost, and then you see, you know, it's this is primarily what we see on television, right? Somebody will show up and see the ghost, like it, no, no, maybe not physically see, but know the ghost is there and the ghost is trapped, and say, "Hey, just go to the light." And all of a sudden, the ghost like, "Oh, what? Yeah, all yeah. I got to do is just go to the light." <laughs> <laughs> That's, true. That's the part I don't get. It's like okay, if it's that easy, the, you, you know what I mean? So there has got to be more you're to talking it. Talking about, especially at, like in motion pictures and things like that, is a priest or some sort of exorcist, yeah, and there's an wh- intention how do they behind know? their process. Is it just the intention? Yes. Yeah, probably just a, a pure intention be. instead But of you would think, though, if you're stuck and you're a ghost, you have to have some kind of consciousness, I would think. But every single culture... Right? So how would the ghost not know that the ghost is supposed to go or not go? Um, I th- because the trauma of death. Yeah, yeah. And what's interesting is that when a physical person sees a non-physical object doing something that they shouldn't be doing the reaction is fear so yeah. you've got a traumatized energy from the ghost and then this person or a series of people are feeding that energy their fear yeah so whereas as opposed it. to a a you know religious figure that comes in and says with not fear without fear yeah. is saying let's come in here and and just you know you don't need to do this anymore you can go you can go to the light so they're they're not feeding it with the fear, and that changes their the interaction with the ghost, and maybe they feel yeah, like they don't they can go home. Every culture, whether it's like like Catholicism or even down to ancient Egypt, there was an intent and a ceremony built into the process, and that ceremony drives their intent, which separates it from that fear. Hmm. So it's just constantly driving in. And well, if I ever become a ghost, I hope someone shows up and goes, "Hey, man." Go to the light, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Waffle House. Yeah, bro. so you can be like, oh, I'm a ghost. Oh, what? Go to the Waffle House. This, this podcast brought to you by Waffle House. They yeah, should. Really. They sponsor. really should. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, here's, here, there's another theory. So um, the the stone tape theory, have you heard this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's an idea where it's not a consciousness. It's just a traumatic energy. It's just an energy um, absorbed into this building or this location right. that is, it's it's just a tape loop. Yeah. So there's not a, a stuck uh, person, personality, physical this is replay. personality. It's just a replay of this energy that's that's in this field, which can also be dissipated by, ble- you know, there are people that do uh, 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 go to uh, battlefields and stuff. And yeah. They, they do ceremonies to to let you know because the energy in the in the that place you know like Gettysburg is just is intense. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I haven't really done that, but uh, you could see where somebody could could again with the, with with the light and intent could go in there and try and dissipate some mm. of the dark energy. That's Which there. is funny because with like Gettysburg and the possible tape theory and how intense it was. Um, there's a couple of popular shows that have done investigations there for paranormal activity. And despite 
all these people doing these investigations, nobody's gone. Well, I don't know of anybody who's gone and just tried to clear the area of that that negative energy or that backed up tape stuff. But even everyday folks like me, I've gone to Gettysburg. I brought both my dogs. We all three of us saw something come out of the woods and come back in. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. from the wood line. And it had the figure of a shadow, like the shadow of like a soldier. So you'd think if just an everyday person like myself has that experience and then all these ghost hunters have all this great experience why isn't somebody there going and you know everybody go to the light uh if there's energy here let's grid it with some crystals or let's try to cleanse the land and it it just well i would think that it would take a lot of energy to dispel that much energy hundreds of people yeah yeah Um, Mm. it's yeah it's it's a it's a bigger it may not just it may not be possible that's true doomed land or yeah mm. with or with what we know now yeah Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) that's a little crazy sorry we've gone into the yeah we have gone into it (laughs) i like it because uh because I was again. Well, it's it's all related. That's the exactly. whole thing. And it's you know, totally and to sit there and think that things are not all related is is crazy. Because yeah. it is. It's all related. Because if you think about it, it's like, okay, so you're born, you know, you live your life, you die. Where do you get your previous information from? It makes sense to dwell off the past or bring it through generational experience and kind of gets passed on through the gene line, right? Or you know, gets passed on through the mom, right? And so, once those experiences fade away, then you're sort of you know, ready to live your life and do your thing, which builds up those new sets of experience. And later on, you die. If you get stuck, then you become a spirit and that sort of thing. But it's all related, you know, and so it all sort of leads to a place to get recycled back and start over again. And kind of keep, it becomes this thing to learn. Yeah. yeah, and you learn and you keep going and you keep going because it, it's all energy, right? And everything is related. So whether it's you know the ghosts or cryptids, or it's all sort of like two degrees of separation not even three degrees it's like two degrees of separation it's like <laughs> what's the difference between a ghost and a spirit mm-hmm. versus a ghost a spirit a poltergeist a ghost a spirit poltergeist you know the stone tape theory looping you know what's the it's all energy it seems like it's all a different type of energy and we don't even really know what kind of energy this planet has and how the ebb and swirl and, and all that stuff of these, this energy pattern, how does that affect everything? Like, nobody really knows. Very true. Very true. Mm. So it's like all of this stuff is missing the basic information of how it all works. Because we talk about ley lines and, you know, the poles are shifting and magnetic lines of flux and influence and the gravity of the holes. We don't really know no. how that affects everything. We just know it's all energy. And if energy can't be created or destroyed, then it makes sense that wherever you go, there you are, and then you come back again. Okay. So, I mean, I like the whole sort of reincarnation thing, you know, that we're all sort of recycled. Because if it doesn't go away, you know, I mean, really, think about it. It's like, oh, well, that there was... you are, you did your thing, you come back for a little while, right, and start over again. Now, you may not know it's you, but you... Know, you How much recycling, though? That's, that's the one question I had, well, you know, because... Probably a lot. But that's the thing, though. If, if, if the recycling happens, but it gets changed by the events that ha- <coughs> excuse me, happen, then it's just enough for it to be hit. Well, like, before we went on break, we started to talk about an old soul. And then you mentioned that um, the Swigard woman, she only had five lives. Was that her name? I was, I was nice. trying to remember. <laughs> but anyways, so... How common is it for there to be a new soul or relatively new well, soul? Here's the idea. We're yeah. not I have this idea. There's a possibility that we're all the same age. Okay. Swigard had this really cool idea of kind of like a the, the Swigards. Um, uh, I call it a, uh, a cosmic big bang, a spiritual big bang, which is what we were all that there was a one point of energy and then it released itself to this creation that it said was it can't be everywhere at once and it said go know my creation and return it to me so in that sense our what we're doing by living our physical lives is returning the creation to the source that created it okay but in our own individual ways Um, so in that sense we're all (coughs) we're all as old as creation and we're all the same age and and old in 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 
in terms of the number of lives, just because that's only the time. So she spent five units of time in a physical body, but she rent, spent the other however bazillion yeah. units of time in the non-physical doing, you know, the work doesn't stop just because you drop the body. Right? Okay. There's a lot of, we're still, we, you know, it's not all drinks with umbrellas and, and you know, <laughs> and, and, and I'm sorry, sorry yeah. to break that up. Well, yeah. for some people it is. Yeah. Uh, but this, the work still goes on. We're working with each other. There's communities working together. There's, um, there's even the, um, hmm. a real interesting idea that um, we, we're kind of a continuum of energy. Like there's a, our, we are the physical, the part of us that's living in the physical world is only a percentage of our, another part of our non-physical self is still up in the non-physical. And you know, like the part that we contact. So basically we're the puppet on the string, but the mastermind. Well, or, but, or the, but it's, the but it's not a mastermind because it's still us. Yeah. It's like, Hmm. Yeah, I, I, it, I, I okay. Get, so we're the snapping turtle. <laughs> Would you stop? Right, <laughs> we're the Bigfoot. And, and, the, and <laughs> no, and you know how the snapping turtle has a lure on the end of the tongue. <laughs> That's it. We're the right. lure on the end of the tongue, but the, the most of us is still. I mean, but it wasn't that, a good example. But. Does that lo- that <clears throat> idea, that explanation, kind of go into um, what do they call it? Um, the Akashic record type thing, or? Um, yeah, I guess the the. Uh, okay, so okay. Wh- what what is, or what are Akashic records? Uh, well, uh, Swagger didn't really use the term Akashic records. Uh, it's the idea that that er, that there is a repository of uh, we'll call it. We build computers in our in our, in the, based on our own right design. So the idea, so the uh, Akashic records would be the master hard drive that okay. holds all the information from all of your different files that you've got and our different files are our different lives right and i never knew what to think about that uh until i had a a revelation uh one of the interesting things about uh the swigards technique is that you get into the body and the first question you say is uh look down at your feet and tell me what you're wearing and then by that you ground in a physical body and then you can establish who this physical body is. And by the time you get through your clothing, you kind of have an awareness of the, pers- the consciousness that, that ah. is happening. So, and the, so the, what I realize is that looking down at your feet, somewhere there's a hard drive that contains all of your choices of footwear for all of eternity and all your lives <laughs> and all of your clothing choices. And I went, oh, that's what the Akashic Record is. It's just this file that contains all this information based on all of our past lives and all of our experiences and all of our unfinished business also. Yeah. And huh. all the things that we started out to do and didn't do, all the things that we did do, it's our report card and our hard drive all in yeah. one place. So that's cool. a, the computer model is probably the easiest way to, to describe it. No, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm like, how does that even work? Because I always got, yeah, I always got like the very superficiary. It's very, very topical explanation of it, and it never made sense to okay. me. So, does that, does <laughs> like, that, yeah, that okay. makes a lot more sense. But what's interesting is a lot of times it's presented as a book. Again, this because you know even in the non-physical, we only have our own ways of perceiving it. Mm-hmm. You know, in, in in the non-physical, there's a certain point where you're still seeing, you know, people. You know, <coughs> two arms, two legs, a head, two eyes, all that stuff. It's that that's the form that we can relate to, whether they look they actually look that way or not. Yeah. Um, so the the idea that there's a book is our way of okay. It's like a big history book. Like families used to have books mm-hmm. on the on the on the coffee table with all yeah. the grandparents stuff like that. Yeah. This is our version of that, and it's just so if a book is a good way to, to contain that information good if it's a hard drive that's another way to, to approach it it would have to be a hard drive for me because exactly. i was just like because <laughs> yeah. yeah. i have a, a, a lot of stuff i'm really bad at turn to page 34 okay i'm on page 37 oh, so really it's 31. more like the cloud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's like storing everything all your experiences <laughs> exactly. and everything in the cloud exactly. yeah the cloud but yeah i was just and yeah. it's interesting the cloud again we we created the cloud right or you know computer geeks can complain it can created the, the cloud and it's it's like based on an idea that's bigger than 
the creation that you know than computers yeah. and, and the cloud it's that's a great idea because we're, we're all the 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 non-physical experience between lives is kind of like the cloud you just go up to the cloud where all the information is stored yeah and then occasionally you come back down and you're a file again you know yeah. <laughs> or an app or whatever yeah. and that kind of oh, kind of cool. leads into another question that i had because that whole cloud thing and that people all of us have some sort of access to that cloud um something that is kind of a bone of contention with me which is when many different people claim their regression links them to somebody like noteworthy or a famous person like there's eight women who say they were cleopatra that type of thing Probably yeah a thousand eight hundred thousand you know oh yeah so <laughs> like who are you in the past lives yeah it's like you know, I was a stable cleaner for the king. No, it's no. like you're always like, I was a king. I was. But that, that's another part of it, though. The but expectation kind if of you thing. have all these people accessing the cloud, is it possible that eight thousand women were actually Cleopatra? Or well, yeah, that's. I mean, uh, uh, Carl Jung had a whole thing about collective consciousness. Yeah, and that we're 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 having okay. these. There are these memories that we share. Um, I haven't had uh, people. Anybody claim to be famous, or oh, really? one person that claimed? Yeah, it's all it's all very you know. It's a lot more mundane. Yeah, stable cleaners uh. than there are kings. You know <laughs> I mean? it's, a, it's a lot more you know. So, so you know, we've I've been all across the spectrum, male, female, different races, different yeah. ages, stuff like that. But I, no, nobody really Cause famous that was like the that. Thing that always bugged me was, hmm. especially when I was growing up, you'd hear, you know all these women claiming to be Cleopatra or I was James Dean. And then a half hour later, somebody else was James yeah, Dean. Yeah. And you're like, mm. there's just by pure math alone, there were a lot more stable boys exactly. than there were famous actors. Right, right. So I, I don't understand. Maybe, well, maybe that you know cloud what? explanation. 99% of the time, mm. someone told them mm. that that was who they were. Oh, like I very few of those people have actually again, run a life or, or had a past life regression that took them back to being Cleopatra. So many times I hear that and it's like, well, I was in Sedona and somebody, and I go, oh God, you know, <laughs> somebody told me, it's like, no, oh, just go f see it for yourself. You yeah. know? Mm. Um, interesting. I just did a session with somebody that was, they're all, you know, they're all my favorites until the next one. Right. But um, someone had told them that they had this wound from a, from being stabbed okay. and so we went and, and there was a traumatic situation about it and when we went at the situation and looked at it we found a lot of information but it really wasn't that traumatic so it was interesting that the person pointed them to see the specific life but okay. they saw what they saw was coming through their own filter Oh. And uh, and okay. when we got to art when when this person saw that life it's like well that doesn't you know I'm glad I looked at it, but it's not the trauma that this person thought it was. So you're always dealing, we're, we're all dealing with our own filters. What I like about this technique is at least it's only one filter. It's yours. Yeah. You know, it's not what anytime you've got somebody else who's telling you what they see for you because they're reading the records, they're reading the records through their filter, through reading their records through your filter and through their filter and then through your filter you know what i mean it's just like yeah. it's so complicated it's just you know looking through a, a, a hall of mirrors at that point <laughs> and uh, which is why i like you know just get in the body look down at your feet tell me what you're wearing and let's figure out who this person was and what's going on around them. Hmm. that's that makes a lot more sense yeah yeah because like I said, it, it was and, always... And, and now I've just pissed off all the Akashic Record 3s. <laughs> <laughs> some, of, some of my best friends are Akashic Record 3s. <laughs> They'll be okay. They'll be all right. <laughs> okay. They can so walk it off on like, their This is why we don't communicate so. <laughs> with each other. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's interesting is that, again, just like some people feel like they need... I mean, I've sent people who didn't... My technique didn't work great with. Said, y you should probably go and be hypnotized because you just need to be taken away from yourself you know oh. 99 you know 95 percent of the people i work my technique works but there's some people that just doesn't necessarily work with some people are not comfortable even going here and they need somebody <coughs> to tell them what it is yeah you know oh. that's the only way they're going to get to this information so if it gets you in the door that's fine but there's nothing that nothing that beats seeing your own 
stuff yeah. from you know looking right. down at your feet and, and looking around yeah, you and seeing from, from your own perspective. Exactly, exactly. Huh. And your own filter, which is what. Yeah. 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 That, that was kind of kind of my next question was which like, was? you know, if it didn't work, do you refer them or is there something else or do you try to take them through um, the process again? I, you know, I, it's I haven't had a fail in a long time. I've okay. been, I got a lot better at it. Occasionally in the group, I'm getting about 85, 90 percent in the group techniques. OK. And usually when we do a second one, they that person I've I've been hitting 100 percent on most of my groups wow. but some people just can't i mean it's really fast it's like 10 minutes in and out hmm. um uh, so it's it's a little bit too quick for some people to process all the information it's you know especially in a, in a library minutes community does room. sound really quick i mean do, is there any prep work people need to do beforehand nope, nope um it's and i i just i don't know why the 10 minute thing came up but yeah. somebody said that you i i i want Brian Weiss, who's one of the, uh, he's got a bunch of books out about, he's one of the original psychologists, psychotherapists that started doing this work. Well, he was a hypnotherapist. Um, he does group stuff, and I just, and I could never figure out what he, but he just does a long, drawn out technique. And I was started doing research on inductions and right. different ways to get people in. And, and non, my, I was, I spent like a year looking at non hypnotic inductions. And there was a bunch of people that don't use hypnosis to get there. And I kind of cobbled together a bunch of different ideas from them mm -hmm. and found that I could do it in a group. But 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 the uh, what's interesting is that when the Swigards came up with this te technique 50 years ago, I don't think there was any awareness that you could do this. Mm -hmm. A with a group of people, or B in in and out in ten minutes. It was like, yeah. you know, they they opened the door at that time with right. this amazing technique called the awareness techniques. But now, fifty years later, it's like my my point has always been, okay, what's the next step? Okay, where do we go from here? How do we get it? You know, they th that was an amazing move that they made. Brian Weiss made an amazing step forward. Michael Newton made an amazing step forward. What's what's next? What 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 can we do next? And maybe it's that it's so much easier to access now than it had been about fifty years ago. Well, I think because we are all generally more enlightened and more open. I mean, you it, would think. Well, fifty years ago there weren't. I don't think so. TV shows. Except for Bigfoot. Well, well, think about it like this: <laughs> if you look at like the internet, yeah, right, and the fact that for the most part the internet is not tangible. True. So you, you, you're going off of faith that whatever you're looking at is something that actually exists. If you turn off the light switch, right, and if this is not backed up, you can't access it, it, it goes away. All that information, everything on the electronic age will just go away. Yeah. Right? For just, I mean, you know, there's ways to store it also. Somebody right now is like, no, you could back it. And, but no. I think that people in general are more willing to believe in something or to experience something without actually having to have the physicality behind it. Okay. Because of like, we're looking at the internet right now. You know, you look at your documents, your, yeah, everything you work for, everything you see on the internet. If it didn't exist, it would be gone, of course, right? But the fact that you actually have to kind of look at it and say, even though it's not tangible for me to, to physically grab, I still believe that it's actually there. Right, yeah. So I think that kind of sort of opened, may, maybe made things a little bit easier, sort of grease the wheels a little bit for you to be able to maybe get into whatever frame of mind you need to get into to be able to kind of open that up and, and say, okay, yeah, you know, I can, I can kind of get on board with this. I can kind of see this, you know, okay. to get where you need to be faster, I guess, in the induction process, because that's kind of what we're doing now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, cause it, you know, it, like even if you would go back say 10, 15, maybe even 20 years ago with eBay, and, you know, if you told your grandmother, I just bought an Island off the internet, they're like, how can you buy an Island off the <laughs> internet? It doesn't <laughs> exist. How does it not exist? <laughs> It's almost like trying to explain to your parents that you can actually get paid off the internet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, Content creator. But, but you, <laughs> right. But if you talk to a 12-year-old, they can totally see it because yeah. to them. Yeah. They grew up with it. They don't need. Yeah. They, it's their reality. So it doesn't have to be a physical thing. Mm -hmm. Because think about it also. If you worked in a, in a field where you worked on the internet all day long, at the end of the day, what do you have to actually show for your work? An electric bill. <laughs> really nothing. <laughs> but if you cut grass. Yeah. At the end of the day, what do you have to show for your work? You actually can say, yes. well, the grass was yeah. 10 inches tall. Now it's two inches in Until manicure. Yeah. yeah. Until That's it rains, right? Until it, it blows up all crazy. <laughs> but so I think it's easier for us now to sort of bridge that gap between what's tangible, because it used to be if I can't see it, taste it, touch it, or hold it, I don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
which is the way old way of looking at it. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. you can't touch atoms, and so I just think that it's probably more open now than it would be. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So uh, interesting thought. Uh, um, there's a guy named Jacques Vallée, one of the most interesting writers of the ni- of the 20th century, uh, and he he was a part of the original ARPANET. Uh, at a Stanford uh, yeah. research center and, and, and ARPANET before yeah, DARPA before got before it was the pre-internet and yeah. what he said is that when when first of all that they had set their intention the idea of the internet first of all it was co- it was connecting really smart people to each other to share right. their their tech their the research that right. was the whole idea of it so when they went into it the goal was consciousness enhancement hmm. which is like. So I mean, imagine what. That's kind so, of nutty, right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that was the, so. And 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 what he said that is the original people, like when when somebody on the East Coast was sent a research file from the West Coast, the first time that came across, it was a, it was almost a, it was a consciousness expanding experience yeah. to know that they could do that. Like mind blown, yeah. right there. So yeah. What? So so the fact that we're now we're using it to, to send cat pictures to each other yeah. <laughs> it's kind of disappointing yeah <laughs> uh but you know it was designed to expand our awareness and it in a certain way like you said it has because of the fact that now we we have an awareness of the cloud even yeah. the, the kids know that the stuff isn't in my phone it's out there yeah. somewhere and i'm accessing it um, so we should all as a race continue to i guess keep raising our kids to be more open to those non-tangible things well i think for the most part most of them really are because it yeah. seems like the kids are more open to everything I mean, if you look at generational things right that's true i mean yeah. i still run but into i mean also think about it like this though you know if you if you look at the internet in general and everything that goes along with the internet in general there is not one piece of information you can't find mm-hmm. so it's like the first time in our evolution where somebody isn't controlling all the information except it's not information, it's opinions. <laughs> and yes, you don't, and but... And people don't know that. People think They can't separate opinion yes, from exactly. information, yes. but yes. I think to the to the great unwashed, they don't know the difference. Exactly. You know, so, you know, it, when you see it on the internet, it must be true. Exactly. But on yeah. the other side of that, though, there is people out there, especially some of the kids these days, we'll just use them as an example, that do know that. And so they'll hit 10 or 15 different sources to actually get the truth. Yes, to know that to look. Yeah, yeah. To and look so past the first those will be the ones that are sort of the great sort of uh, forebearers of all of our knowledge. Because like, if you look at like, you know, trying to go and look at the um, well, you guys the great library um, underneath Alexander. the Sphinx and oh, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, uh, Alexandria Library, all that stuff is like, controlled by the few yeah. that would you know delve out the information to you. But now everybody can do it. But that kind of speaks, both of you kind of speaks into something that I thought of with the whole people looking at the internet and believing everything. It's yeah. kind of almost like that rose colored, rose colored glasses thing. See where what you want to see. Yeah. See what you want to see. Um, <coughs> is that something that happens during the, these regressions where people see what they want to see? Mm. Um like they're hoping for the best, so they get seen the best. Uh, or most they, they people show, are yeah. really surprised. Okay. Like uh, I, the thing I he- I I hear more than any other comment is that's not at all what I expected. Okay. Um, uh, and if you've you know if if you're a woman and you look down and you see combat boots or you know I mean it's like yeah. you're, you're in for a very different experience than you could have even imagined because you know wh- like when I did my I, I test everything on myself when I did I s- okay so the idea is you can use a positive emotion as a bridge into a past life to get there really quickly and that's what I do with the groups and when I did it I saw myself I was this incredibly pregnant Indian woman <laughs> you know I you know I don't have kids I'm probably not going to be pregnant in this life and <laughs> it was and I've never but I've also never been that in love with this person that was growing inside Aww. of me it was a completely unique experience yeah. so it was again uh, so I joined the, the the chorus of people going that's not what I expected yeah you, know, like, <laughs> like, you, you can't even imagine <laughs> didn't see that coming yeah, this, yeah yeah so there's so the 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 range of possibilities is so huge that people can't really and you know if you try to do that you probably not have a very good experience because then you're not letting so the image 
take you to where it is. It is very hard to influence your own results, but if you do try to influence them, it's probably not going to lead to a successful regression. Yeah, if you okay. can't let go of it. Uh, what's what's even more interesting huh. is when you hit to that when that body ends and you go into the non-physical state there's a there's an overlap there it's not it's not digital you don't go from totally physical to totally non-physical it's kind of a blending for a while you're still mm -hmm. connected to that body for a while so that the the, the experiences you're having in the non-physical are still kind of based on the body you just left Oh. And then after a while, you realize you, you became you, you can connect with your history, you know, the, of hundreds or thousands of, of lifetimes. Mm. But you, so you're still kind of connected to that one there. So in that sense, our 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 personalities are always going to influence our experience. And then it's just up to us to however, however well we can give ourselves over to the this other experience. That kind of explains why you don't retain all your past life information when you're in your your current life. Yeah, it's almost like a decay. Or well, or it, it kind of makes sense because imagine, okay, if you were a, a very pregnant Indian woman, right, uh, but you're not because your current life, you're just a, a, a kid, a boy who's like nine years old. Yeah. <laughs> so remember How can they make sense of all of yeah. that that's going yeah. on? So that, that would make sense to go through – and for survivability and sort of getting the imprint, it relies off your your past lives, and then sort of the imprint imprint has to fade because you can't use most of that majority of the information because it doesn't fit your current life. Exactly. Okay. Oh, wow. But in an interesting way, it's clouding you. <coughs> yeah. It's it's affecting you. Your you know your your tendencies, your fears, yeah. phobias, talents. Uh, abilities, uh, uh, anxieties. Well, it kind of has to, because you, can, you, can you imagine if you had, just say, five past lives where you were afraid of, like, spiders, the wind, trees, leaves, <laughs> you know, and that would just keep getting imprinted every time. Yeah. <laughs> so that would be awful. Cause then you'd be, you know, well, by the then time, your next life you have agoraphobia, so you're just afraid of all of it and you <laughs> yeah, don't go outside. Well, maybe that's what happens, but, I mean, that kind of, it. Oh, my this gosh. This is a serious rabbit hole. Yeah, oh, it's a huge rabbit hole. <coughs> yeah. I, Excuse me. And but but the best thing is that it's experiential. Yeah. It's not it's it's not informational. It's just, you know, the 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 only advice I can give is try it, you know, see what it's like, experience yeah. it and have your own experience of it rather than have somebody tell you what that experience should be. So, it has okay, so say you go and you want to experience this and you do. Has there ever been any things that you've experienced or, or have seen in, in you've been doing this for a long time where it just has become a completely negative thing for someone and has and that negative experience or whatever completely impacted the way in other words they showed up one way and left completely different from it in a negative way uh, no not really but but it's interesting you said that because um i i've also been uh for about 10 years been studying something called EFT, which is called Emotional Freedom Techniques. It's right. the, the tapping thing, which yeah. is tapping on meridians. And last summer I started a EFT tapping group here in Asheville because I thought we should have a, you know, a, a chance to tap in a group and show people what um, uh, uh, this EFT thing. And, and it's very powerful to move, again, moving energy out throughout the body. Right. And literally before I even had my first meeting, I'm online and I connect with a guy uh, up in the Pacific Northwest and he's doing a form of past lives work and using tapping to move the energy huh. that's connected to it. Yeah. So my, my concern had always been to not re-traumatize the person that I'm working with. Yeah. If, you know, if, if I take you guys back to a past life and you see that for some reason he stabbed you in the in the back you know oh. in a past life not that that ever happened but you know it's she's like, like oh all right yeah. you're, 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 she's gonna be mad at me later on yeah, yeah. can't I'm believe like you'd even can do yeah don't slap in the middle of the night <laughs> but no you, but before what i would tell people is if this uh is you get to control your own degree of discomfort if it's too much we can either pull up and look down from above or we can go someplace else but now it's like i tell people if 
you're coming into a traumatic situation, we can do some tapping on it and move the stuck energy that's connected to it. And then you're not, you can look at something that would be traumatic and it's not traumatic anymore because what a EFT does really well is get rid of negative emotions and trauma. Okay. And huh. so the combination of the two happened before I even had my first beat up. So now I'm really kind of doing a combination of the two. I've added the EFT tapping into the past life work and the past life work into the EFT tapping work in a very in a way that probably pisses people off on both <laughs> but EFT people and the past life people, but that's my job. Well, <laughs> they'll have to get over I'm gonna it. have no. to I kinda wanna see that in action because that's just a little mind blowing for me because I'm like, wait, so they can still be regressing but you can tap to help them get through the process well i mean it's or, it's, yeah. it's if i'm running you through a past life and you're seeing this you know if you're getting burned at the stake mm -hmm. you know it's like that's it's it's not the burning getting burned at the stake it's it's the being walked to the to the to yeah. the to the thing to get tied to it that's what's traumatic after that dying yeah. doesn't hurt it's amazingly it's surprisingly it doesn't yeah. your body you we we're out of the body before most of the damage happens um, mm -hmm. but you're being traumatized by seeing what all you were trying to do was be a helpful person in your village and then it went wrong yeah. and they decided to burn you at the stake so you've got it's not the physical trauma it's the emotional trauma that's connected to being betrayed by the, your community or whatever yeah. so you we can tap on that and release your pressure your stress about it so that it's not traumatic, so that you can see it and go, okay, that was just something that, that was just happened. Crap, you know, yeah, that's yeah. okay. That's how they they did that that time, and <coughs> and then you look and see, well, how is that connecting? And you know, how many of these people are in my life now, and how are we relating to each other? And and hmm. yeah, it gets pretty interesting. Yeah, that is, I'm like, it's, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really cool. Oh man, that is pretty cool. Because I can see by moving that sort of you know pain point out of the way then you can continue the experience longer to get more out of it exactly yeah and yeah. And, it, and it also and i hadn't intended for it to be like but there's a lot of it with in within energy work uh, uh there's an idea that we're doing healing work for like our our ancestors yeah like so with people we haven't even met there are things in our genetic line that are affecting our behavior and our our beliefs and our our sometimes even our physical being or our health and stuff like that yeah. and the idea is that you're healing so you you so it's the same idea you're healing people that energetically that are affecting you uh by doing these these techniques and in this case you're actually healing this past life personality is yeah. getting relief because of your tapping on your body because it's you it, it, it it's that's, yeah, yeah that's a little, <laughs> I love the looks on your face. I it's weird because well, no, I can, I I can kind of see that because I, I remember um, there's well certain, hearing about the it was a show yeah. that I was listening to and they said something the same thing by fixing that past life or that issue or getting through that gives them release and that's one of the things that sort of gets checked off the list as you go through to get enlightenment. Yes, uh, uh, there, because that past life is still experiencing it because if all past lives exist at the same time to a varying degree and all future lives exist at the same time in a future degree because everything happens all at the same time because time is really just a construct that we have created then all you're really doing is is you're taking that sort of you know not positive experience and letting the pressure off of it so that the energy can go somewhere else yeah taking the charge out of it exactly yes. yeah. yeah there's okay. also a fairly well-known religion that kind of goes through that process where they heal your ancestors and then baptize your ancestors oh, really to yeah. streamline your eventual life and the life that you lead in that religion Interesting. and that's kind of it's weird that you said that because that was the first thing i went back to i was like wait there, <coughs> there's certain religions that do this as well uh, and there's and, a there's yeah. a bunch of them actually yeah <laughs> so in that sense we're our own ancestors because yeah. of our own yep. our past life here. yeah but we're in these physical bodies that have its own backstory in that sense. Also, the phys our physical beings are are our energetic our, our energetic bodies are not a blank slate, and our physical bodies are not a blank slate. So there's kind of a combination of the two in there. Hmm. It's weird. Okay. I know, I know. And then the time thing comes in. <laughs> and then it gets <laughs> it just messes it all up. Well, and, and the the thing about time is, is that 
Yeah, there's a lot of cultures that don't actually believe in time at all. Yeah. Everything happens at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, past, present, future, all that is all occurring at the same time. And so it's like a, a it's like a an right. idea or a thought. Right. So um, like when you look at pictographs, right? Pictographs typically if you look at them, they don't have to be in order. Oh, interesting. You know what I mean? So like a lot of uh, the native cultures are like that. They'll the pictograph, the picture or a petroglyph, yeah. Or even a petroglyph can be past, present, future. Interesting. All at the same time. So you have to kind of look at that and see what the idea behind the pictograph actually is. So if you see like five or six different things and you look at it and you're like, okay, this talked about the agricultural, you know, bounty of the land that we were on for a thousand years and how the generations. And so from looking at that pictograph, you can see generations lived there for a long period of time. This is what they ate. These were the vocation of what they actually did. You know, so you could see in a, at one shot, looking at that one picture, how that whole existence sort of was for them before they even went away or yeah. disappeared or whatever. So it's all like all those little individual pictures give you the thought, and there's the thought that becomes the history and the past history and all of that and all your generational history all in one shot. Bam, yeah. done. But we don't think that way. No, we don't. And because it's we have the pesky letters. Yeah. Right? We have to write in letters. Right, so you have to write like five things to equal one letter, right? To equal one word, right? To actually get to be, so by the time you're done, you have all like all these words to equal a thought. Like if if you say, I'm a, a corn farmer. If you just drew a, a stalk of corn, right, on the stalk, and then a, a stalk of corn or the ear of corn, like laying in a basket, you say, okay, corn, corn farmer. farmer. Yeah, but it's it's not just the letters and the written language. I would say it. It's also from a very young age and starting lately, and lately meaning hundreds of years, humans have been taught to think in a linear fashion. And you yeah. s- you are scolded or ostracized for not you know, thinking outside of a linear Well, fashion. the non-linear thinkers are seen as being weird. Well, the Navajo were not linear thinkers. Aborigines, they were not linear thinkers. And Aborigines, they have more of an acceptance of this whole past life idea and the dreamland and where your soul or where your consciousness goes, they still have that way because they're not influenced. Me. Well, they don't let themselves be that influenced. Me, the average Joe, I'm sitting here like, okay, how do I think in a non-linear way? How do I think of something outside of the time and present that I live in? It's it's a very hard concept to grasp. So. Well, you know what causes that? What? Math. <laughs> Yep. Would you stop? And it's true, though. Not a fan of math. Huh? Nope. No, the maths, I'm not. The huh? maths. <laughs> That's like algebra. I firmly believe that algebra was started as a joke. Really? Yeah. So, because it was created in, like, Arabia, right? Okay. So you had one scientist and another scientist separated by distance, and so they'd send each other problems. Mm-hmm. And so I think algebra was created that way as, a, as sort of a joke. Mm-hmm. Like, That's I have joke. three apples. <laughs> My apples equals X. And they'd send it off, and they'd do it right back. Well, X must obviously equal three, right? And they were just going back and forth because I have yet to run, in my own life, I have yet to run across a problem, a math-related problem that I could not solve using arithmetic. Okay. I found a great quote. I just read this yesterday. I just finished this amazing book called American Cosmic, a woman named Diana Pulsulka, who is a religious scholar in right here in Wilmington, wrote a book about a bunch of very interesting uh, paranormal topics and Ooh. she's she got connected to this guy Jacques Vallée who I keep whose name keeps coming up <laughs> here's just here's this quote that I pulled the theory of space and time is a cultural artifact made possible by the inf- invention of graph paper <laughs> if we had invented the digital computer before graph paper we might have a very different theory of information today what modern computer scientists have realized is that ordering by space and time is the worst possible way to store data. Absolutely. <laughs> is yeah. that correct? Yeah. If there is no time dimension, as we usually assume there is, we may be tra- traversing incidents by association. Yeah. Modern computers retrieve information associatively. There you awesome? go. So it's graph paper. 
Absolutely. Or, or a and joke. Since, or, a since we, <laughs> or both. Since we've, we put the construct in there and we, you, we have to, we, we've made everything go to the construct, that's like quantum computing is different. Quantum computing is, is basically non-clustered, non-linear thinking. Right. By association. Like right. Like you said. Yeah. yeah. But do I, so, so maybe we're moving towards the next step is away from the graph paper since we're not, nobody's using graph paper anymore. Yeah. How long before the graph paper concept dissipates? with into the associative information of you know as people get further and further away from from math right. maths yeah. Yeah. and more into quantum computing at a certain point we're going to change our concept of time at and space. At least another generation or so, well, I'd multi, say. Yeah. Well, we should. Yeah. And when we do that, then we can actually add a different, add another dimension. So instead of having just the three dimensions that we, we currently exist I mean, in. Graph we'll have, paper we'll is one dimension, dimension. But then you have things in geometry that are taught that are not mm-hmm. one dimension. Well, if we so have the fourth dimension, then it means that everything becomes exponentially, ex- well, uh, or everything becomes is exponential. Is the fourth dimension where our souls are, right? You know, like outside of time. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. I'm just throwing a guess out there hmm. so. <clears throat> all right kind of crazy <laughs> <laughs> yes. welcome to my world there you go <laughs> <laughs> so i think we actually ax- asked all our uh, interview questions well no we've asked everything but the one. Oh, what is that and this question is basically so bobby <laughs> what's the one Sort of Fortiana subject that you're really into. Besides oh, past lives. I can only choose one. Oh. Well, I mean, you, you can. <laughs> no, you can. See, that's, here's the problem you're going to have, because I think it's the same problem that I have. You can't just pick one without it relating to another, exactly, and it exactly. relates to another, which still, because we've said this like four times so far, it just drives me nuts that, you know, a UFO person won't believe in Bigfoot or whatever. They think that you're crazy. They, it, it's sort of all related, so. But what's the one sort of unified thing that you like to go to first, I guess? Um, probably the UFO and alien, that whole concept. Yeah. Um, hugely. Like, again, this book I just read, it's a religious scholar looking at UFO events. And her take on it is because she's a religious scholar, she doesn't have to believe what the people she's studying believe she just studies the way their belief structure their belief structures affect their lives Ah. and so she has this fascinating idea that we that she has a front row seat at the foundation of a new religion just like the people 2000 years ago had a front row seat to watch christianity right grow you know underneath it it was an under underground thing for 200 years before Mm. it became a state religion now we've got people who've been affected you know i don't know since maybe since roswell if we use that as the basic of our the, the the modern era it's 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 now and her thing is the way media is affecting and feeding the uh the uh ufo religion Mm-hmm. You know, religion in air quotes right. that's going on, and and studying it as a religious scholar would, and it's like that's the coolest way to look at it because yeah. it's like you're not. It doesn't. Everybody else, like you said, with everybody else is stuck on the belief thing. I believe right. in UFOs, and you believe in cryptids, and you're wrong. Exactly. You know, um, which is which is basically religions. It, it, it's true. It is. It's, it's, yeah, it's it, a cryptid religion. It's yes, exactly, exactly what it is. So it's like yes. Okay, I believe in this. And you believe in that, so you are completely wrong. It's I'm the same a, thing. As I'm like, a fundamental cryptoid. And yeah. Yeah. And you so, are uh, instead of uh, crucifixion, uh, let me blast you on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a ufologist, so no, you know, it's yeah. just exactly the same thing. But it's that way with I think with humans in general, with most everything. Yeah, yeah. Look yeah. at sports teams. It's true. Yeah. You know, and we do that with everything. Okay, I have to. Be, I have. To, I believe in this, and I will hang out with people that also believe in this. But we don't believe in what you believe. So you are the evil. You're the the enemy. You're the. Yeah. We can't get along. Jerry Seinfeld said, "You're rooting for laundry because they're just wearing different shirts." Yeah. For different teams. <laughs> basically, yeah. It's <laughs> a great line. And I think that even goes back to the caveman time, where basically you had your tribe, you had basically your clan, if you will. And you basically stayed away from other clans that were doing exactly the same thing. The only time you ever came together was to trade resources. Oh, yeah. And then you made it a point to stay away. Interesting. And so it's kind of weird, right? And so when you, if you look at it like that, we've been doing this for, and a lot of it's just for self-preservation because 
For survivability, it's easier for a smaller clan to survive than it would be for a giant clan to survive. Look at those resources, right? You know, resources you can take care of 10 or 15 people at the most. And everybody has their place and everybody knows their place. But if you have a clan of 50, 75, 100 people, they don't travel well. They can't find the resources because you have to travel further to get more resources because you actually need more. And I think when the clans sort of got together, for whatever reason, whether it was survivability or just the lack of resources, they had to pull their own physical resources to try to survive. That's when the whole farming thing actually started. So like, we got to start growing stuff, man, because we can't we can't just take a hundred people on a road trip, right? Let's take a hundred people and let's walk the woods and try to find food. You know, you, you, you're easy pickings for everything that wants to take you out, so that reduces your survivability as well. So, if that's ingrained with us since the beginning, <clears throat> I guess. It's still a holdout, you know, so we still have that sort of, you know, so, so I don't want to call it an instant. The UFO community and the past life community. It's all, all examples of the same thing. Yeah. It's like my football team, my sports team versus your sports team. You know, my religion versus your religion. <clears throat> my music versus this music. Mm-hmm. My politics versus this politics. I think it's just the way we are. I think, yeah. as a whole, I think humans well, are. Well, maybe the way we were, and maybe we need to not be. That well, way. I think we have yeah. a, a. I think the millennials actually are going to be the culture that sort of breaks all that. I hope mm. so. So, because know. otherwise, humans are assholes. <laughs> just. It's true. It is. It's completely true. Well, we'll, we'll see if the millenn- if the millennials vote in, you know, President Dwayne Johnson. You know, if <laughs> if, yeah. if a media person can. Well, and see, here's the thing. You just put a you just put a nail right on his head. What do we have here? We basically have two parties, right? We need an extra choice. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's the same thing. Either you're on my team yeah. or that team. What about we need a third option? That's all there is to it. Because if we had a third option, that basically takes and and sort of evens out the playing field. Because if you have one person controlling, the other person doesn't. There's because a problem. But if, if you, you have, have three choices. That just eliminates some of the power from each one. Except of the other when two. it's forty-five, forty-seven, and whatever you know, eight. You know, what I mean, it's like yeah. when it's still yeah. so the you know all you're doing is is affecting yeah. one group or the other with this. With this but I don't think it's. But see, be the third party thing when it, when you do that, that's the problem because they say, oh, then we'll take you know you you took away from this particular party here because the three parties need to stand on their own. Well, yeah. exactly. It needs to be if you a, have yeah, three yeah. official parties and they mm-hmm. stand on their own. A yeah, good example so. would be New Mexico, which just <laughs> last year allowed the Libertarian Party to be a recognizable <coughs> option on their ballot. Uh, because when you registered in New Mexico, you had to oh, be. That's right. It was either Democrat, you, or, Democrat or Republican. Right or right. Yeah, and no yeah. other, you know. what's funny is, especially in New Mexico, there is a huge, huge support for not just the libertarian party but there's a huge concentration of green party people Mm. Uh, if i mean if you were to create at least the libertarian thing what they've noticed in their recent elections is wow there was a huge loss on the republican side and the democrat side so then it almost ends up being if since those were only two candidates for the governor race that started to make a head they were fighting, clawing tooth and nail to the last days of the election because they had just lost too much of their party. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for a while there, everybody's like, oh my God, the Republican's going to win because the Democrat Party just lost all these people who <coughs> usually toe the Democratic yeah, yeah, line. Yeah. Um, and I think just laying it out there for what it is, which is nobody nobody is all red coats, nobody is all freedom fight, you know, it, you're not everything's black and white and so vote cryptid yeah vote cryptid <laughs> there you go vote, <laughs> vote creep geek yeah, yeah. <laughs> vote weirdos right yeah. we're all right. weirdos <coughs> are you launching today greg or are you gonna wait till uh, uh you get some support so <laughs> that's right <laughs> but i do want to mention as far as you know with this interview um if you would like to learn more information about bobby you're going to go to pastlivesproject.org and you can also find them on Facebook. You run a Facebook group as well. Yes. And yes. it's Past Lives Project Asheville. Right. Is that Just it, type thinking. that into the Facebooky thing and you'll find it. Um, otherwise, in our show notes, we are going to include all contact details for Bobby as well as you know ways to click in and just learn more. Yes. And you'll be able to reach him through that. Um, am I missing anything? 
Keep going. <laughs> I don't know what else. You're I'm doing missing. it good. Keep going. Uh, um, if you want to contact us, as always, that's going to be contact at creepgeeks.com. You can find us on Facebook, iTunes, Google Play, everywhere. I heard radio. And uh, join our Facebook group. Our Facebook group, where is the page? You'll see announcements about events and other big news. Our Facebook group is an interactive place for you to play, come up with ideas, post memes, anything. So join the Facebook group, get involved, and hey, you can even determine what type of interviews and subjects we talk about. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know what else to do now. (laughs) Well, at this point, we'd like to leave it up to you, Bobby. Yeah. Is there anything you want to say? Anything you want to put out there? Good. I just just thank you guys. I love having the opportunity to talk about this stuff. Yeah, it's fun stuff. I'm really looking forward to the roundtable. Yes. Next week, that's going to be really, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So for those of the for those people who are just tuning in, thank you very much. <laughs> the round table, uh, I think, is going to be super fun. Yeah. We're going to have all the people we just talked about, right? We're going to have past lives people like you with the woo-woo thing. Because that's just an easy way to describe a cryptid, UFO. Just everybody up there being able to talk, kind of like we're doing now, ask questions. All of that's going to be streamed live. You can be here and see it. It's going to be super fun. Yeah, we got what, cryptid people and ghost Yeah, yep. Paranormal investigators, Paranormal cryptid investigators. people, um, woo-woo, <coughs> woo-woo people, and then whoever else. It's a nice know. cross-section. Yeah. Really nice cross-section. Gonna All gonna local people here in the Asheville area. It's yeah, gonna it's going to be fun. So people should come by and say, hey, see what's up. And our goal is to um, just make this event and event awareness grow so that, you know, we can continue to do some stuff like this. Yeah, and it's free. And there'll be snacks. Snacks. <laughs> the, paranormal, and prizes. the paranormal mama will be feeding people. So, <laughs> uh, And it's actually a pretty good thing because you can come to the shop and you can basically get all your, all your spiritual needs. Um, and if you have any questions and stuff like that, this is a good place to find out because that's something that we noticed too. Um, when we started this thing, trying to figure out how we wanted to do it, like what would happen if you needed to get some help? Like maybe you've got something going on in your house. Who do you talk to? Maybe you keep getting weird, you know, deja vu things. Maybe you, you have the inkling that it's possible that something in your past is affecting your future. And maybe that's a past life. Who do you talk to? Well, that's you know, the question I was going to ask. Like, <laughs> there needs to be something where that people can look and find out. You know, because you, you're not going to look. In, I mean, you could probably look in the phone book, but I think a lot of times you, you're relegated to you know running across. Okay. Fortune tellers and phone books are maybe something that. I mean, if you're turning to that, you know, I in this day of age, it's all about the comments, right? When people review and they do comments, so who do you talk to? So I like the word of mouth thing. You say, okay, if you think you've got some past life stuff going on, or you need some explanation, maybe you should take a look. You need to get a hold of Bobby. And if it's a if it's a bump in the night in your house, then you need to talk to the. Yeah, like like M and D, paranormal. I mean, you know, all of that stuff. I think because you just can't go to traditional means anymore for a lot of different yeah. things because traditional means are not going to give you the answer. You know, like, who do you talk to? You're going to go up to a cop, say hello. <laughs> I keep hearing things in my house at night. I mean, you know, who, who do you? There's an old crone sitting on my chest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like a. Uh, and when I wake up, I'm paralyzed, and my energy is being drawn out. But yeah, that's the quickest trip to the hospital. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so that's one of the things that we're working on. We're actually working on like sort of a, a directory for all this stuff. Excellent. Yep. And you're certainly going to be in it. So well, thank you. And if you need an update on a regular basis of all of the available strange information, we have the Creep Geeks podcast. Oh, yeah. thank Check you. In <laughs> <on>. <laughs> Which for I, a brief I'm second there, I was slightly afraid. I had no idea what you were going to uh, say. I saw that look on your face. Like, what? No, and I, I finally I found you guys on on iTunes. Now. You're in the podcast store, so mm-hmm. I can. You're in my phone, and I Very caught nice. up on my trips over here. I caught up on the. When on your the phone, we're going to activate your FaceTime and see oh, what you're doing. <laughs> you know, I think that's probably about the only subject that doesn't really blend so well with others. What? And this whole thing, maybe the conspiracy. The conspir- that's true. Because yeah. everything sort of becomes a conspiracy, and I think there's just a general level of untrustworthiness. Yeah. Not that the people, 
you know, that, that they're untrustworthy, that they don't think that you are trustworthy. That's the problem. Because when you start looking at conspiracies, it's, I think a little bit higher level of paranormal. Uh, paranormal. Paranoia. Paranormal. <laughs> and where they, they don't necessarily trust what you're saying. Yeah. Because, um, you know, yeah, you would say that. And that's another rabbit hole. Too. Yeah. That's a whole other <laughs> podcast. That's a parallel rabbit hole. Yeah. Rabbit hole. <laughs> so, and see, that's, 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 that should have been the name of our podcast. What? The parallel rabbit, rabbit hole. hole. Rabbit hole. Let me go Google Paranormal that. Paranormal rabbit hole. <laughs> Paranormal rabbit hole. You know, and, that's, and with the round table, um, the idea behind that was was to have like-minded people but have experience in certain subjects in this whole sort of 14 thing. Being able to sit up there and either have a conversation amongst themselves or with people asking these questions that they may have, like maybe an audience type thing where anybody can answer that question, and they would. Because mm-hmm. y- 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 it's rare that you come across, you have you know, like-minded people with different sort of fields of speciality there, all in one spot, yeah, yeah, ready to jump in there and answer. Because you know. mm-hmm. I think that'd be great, because why not? As far as we know, it's never been done before, so we're excited to do it. And it's, it's live. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it'll be we're live. Awesome. So we're, we're gambling. For as good as that's going to be. <laughs> and we're going to call upon the power of the internets. <laughs> so... Really see looking forward going. to it. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Really yeah. Oh, it's going to be great. And when is it, Omi? February 24th, 2 to 4 p.m. Yes. So. Now, the shop itself in downtown Marion will be open from 1 to 5. Yeah. So you can come a little early. Uh, space is limited. Yeah. But so. you can always watch it live on YouTube. Yeah. It will be streamed. But don't get You should come. Yeah. If you can. But if you can, you can definitely see it There's on the There's no internet. snacks on YouTube. That's right. There's... <laughs> Yeah, your snacks are self-provided <laughs> when you're home eating a stale Pop-Tart when you could be hanging out with other people. So. Right. It should be pretty good. Well, thank you, guys. This was a blast. You yeah. were very welcome. Is there any questions, comments, concerns that you have, sir? Nope. Nope. That was not for you, <laughs> nope. Omi. My attorney answered for me. I appreciate yeah. it. Let me, let me ask my attorney. Do I have any thoughts about this? <laughs> Do I have any thoughts? No? Okay, I'm good. Sweet. All right. All righty. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the Creepiest Podcast. We'll be back again. So, see you later. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Bye. I like peanut butter. I like peanut butter. I like peanut butter. I like peanut butter. I like peanut butter.